Hello everyone, welcome back to Mark Shrimp Tongues. Right guys, I thought what I would do today is answer a question that I put out into one of my posts recently on my community tab. Right, I'll share that image with you now. Right? It was something along the lines of what is it you find the hardest about keeping neocaridina shrimp? And guys, I was actually quite shocked. I was very, very shocked at the answer because I didn't think that 50% of you still struggle to keep neocaridina al alive and guys i'm sorry if i'm not very clear in my videos and stuff and you, you, maybe you find me a little bit hard to follow and that's why you, you can't quite grasp how easy it is to keep neocaridina because um yeah i was quite shocked i do have to apologize for that as well my by the way i think i'm sick today i don't know if it looks like i'm sick in my eyes <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me, but I do feel a little bit sick. One of the winter sicknesses, probably. But anyway, guys, I thought what we would do today is cover that a little bit on what you can do to mitigate your shrimp dying, basically. Right? Because if you struggle to keep your shrimp alive, it's just it's as easy as follow some simple steps, and these deaths that you should that you see will get lower and lower and lower. They should the percentage of deaths you should see get lower and lower and lower. Right, so we're going to cover that today. I'm going to do a water change in this tank over here. And yeah, we'll cover some basic things that you must do, in my opinion, to make sure that you don't kill your shrimp. Right, so let's do that today. Alright, so let's cover the very first thing that you do when you come in to your home or your shrimp room. The absolute very first thing that you do before you even think, before you even look at a shrimp tank, guys. The very first thing you do is you want to go and wash your hands, right? So this is just dish soap. Right? And I've had this for years. You can see how much I've used on it. And oh, guys, all you need is one single drop of this stuff onto your hands, lather up, get the back sides in between your fingers, right? And then you want to scrub your nails and then you want to rinse your hands thoroughly under the water for at least a minute, I would reckon, right? And make sure you get up your arms a little bit as well because is sometimes that soap can go up here, you don't want to put the soap into the tank. And the reason we do this guys is because throughout your day you will be touching your pets, you'll be touching your hair, you'll be putting things on your face, makeup, moisturizer, aftershaves, deodorants, whatever else. And just that being on your fingers is enough to kill your shrimp if you put your hands in your tank. So imagine that you have dry hands, and you think, yeah, I'm going to put some moisturiser on, you're sitting there watching the TV for a little while, and then you think, yeah, let's do some water changes on my shrimp tank. Right, and you go over, you get your arm into your tank, up to your elbow, well, all that moisturiser that's on your hands will now be going into the tank, right, and a lot of this stuff kills shrimp. People don't know this, but a lot of this stuff does kill shrimp. If you have a dog, for example, or a cat, and if you use flea and tick treatments on your animal, right, and you're sitting there all day and you're like the stroke in your car, this is specifically if you use drops. I don't think the stuff that they put into the food that kills fleas and ticks, nowadays there's a little tablet you get, I don't think that's quite as bad because that's what we use, but if you use the drops of stuff that goes in the back of the animal's neck, and then it goes into the animal's body and it kills the fleas and ticks for like a month, this is the stuff that you have to watch for. Because if you're like this, stroking your hands, stroking your animal, not your hands, over and over and over all day, right? You're actually getting that stuff onto your hands, right? And then if you go over to your aquariums, this is what kills shrimp, right? And I have had first-hand experience of this where I was actually shipping shrimp one day. I, guys, I even remember to put gloves on when I was doing the tick treatment with my dog, and it wasn't enough. There wasn't enough somehow, this treatment still got into my hands, could have been on my forearms or something like that. And when I was catching these shrimp and putting them into their breather bags, they all started to go upside down and acting all weird and whatever else. And it took me a while to figure out what it was, but the same day, like maybe about two hours before, I had to put the, I had put this stuff onto my dog and it was after, I think I, think I clapped her neck. Right, so this stuff, once it goes into your hands, I think a lot of it is like, it's almost like a neurotoxin, guys, for um, ticks and fleas, where all you need to do is, they all they need to do is touch the area they're dead. Right, so it's the same with shrimp. So by using this stuff and scrubbing under your nails, you're removing as much of this stuff 
as possible from your hands, all the moisturizers, moisturizers deodorants, whatever else, right? Because yeah, you will pick up an awful lot of stuff through the day. Get that off your hands, right? And then you can tick that off as one of the things that possibly could be killing your shrimp, right? Let's go on to the second bit because there's a second part to this as well. And this is more if you're doing water changes. Let's do that. All right, before we actually do a water change, let's actually go over what is actually happening when you take water from your tap because 99.9% .9 of you that watch my videos probably use tap water if you keep neocarrageenum. And yeah, I know plenty of people that use tap water and they breathe thousands of neocarrageenum, right? So it's not impossible to keep neocarrageenum on tap water, but you must prepare it, guys. You can't just simply put the stuff straight from the tap into your tank without any kind of treatment at all, or you risk killing your entire colony, right? So there's steps that you must take to help mitigate the possible poisons and chemicals and stuff that go into the tank and uh, start killing your shrimp. So one of the ones that I have personally noticed in my house because I have copper pipes up behind there, right? And when my pipes are sweating because they do sweat, it's basically condensation in my room goes into the cold water pipe and it sweats. Right? When this condensation uh, starts to get bigger and bigger in form, it actually drips down onto to my white boiler over there. And the thing I notice, guys, is once that water evaporates, it's green, right? So that tells me that there's copper in that water that is evaporating down and hitting the top of my boiler, right? So if you have copper pipes, there's one of the things I would suggest you do is maybe just run the water for a minute before you start to use it for your aquariums because this will help get rid of all the bits that might be from the copper that go into the water and then into your tank, right? So if you run the water, you lessen the risk of this going into your tank right? does that make sense do that and th this will help you quite a lot and the second part of that is the water change itself right so in your tap water depending on where you live uh, there will be different things in your water that are designed to kill bacteria and little animals and whatever else right so one of the main ones that you guys will all know is chlorine right? so chlorine they put chlorine in it into your water and it kills all the bacteria it kills absolutely everything and it makes it perfectly safe to drink uh, for us, right, but there's different levels of toxicity for all animals, right, so what's perfectly healthy for us is detrimental and deadly for shrimp. So this is where a lot of you guys will have a problem in that you're not using a dechlorinator. Right? So if I had, a, had to choose a dechlorinator, I would use Seacom Prime or Seacom Safe, one of those two, because they, they seem to be very uh, concentrated for the value of them. For the cost of them which is always what we're looking for as well if you do many water changes you've got to get stuff as cheap as possible if you have a shrimp room like this and you have tap water yeah use something like seacom safe and that'll save you a ton of money right, so what these things do is they neutralize the chlorine in your tap water and they make it safe for your uh, your aquariums right, so one of the misconceptions that i often see is people saying that if you aerate your water Beforehand, for 24 hours, it will remove chloramines, right? That's, that is not true. It, it's not true. You can't gas off chloramines. So if you know for sure that your tap water has chloramines, gassing off isn't enough. Right? But what gassing off does do, it will gas off the, the main thing, chlorine, out of your tap water. So, right, so in my opinion, guys, if you're in tap water, do this. Do it in a layered system of protection, right? Wash your hands like we talked about before. Age your water. All aging means is you get a bucket of uh, of tap water and you put an air stone through it and you, you just let it sit somewhere for at least a day before you actually use it in your tank. That gets rid of chlorines. Chlorine, right? It gets rid of the chlorine gas out of the water. It doesn't get rid of chloramines, however, so you must still use a dechlorinator. Right? So that's why we're talking about Seacom Safe or Seacom Prime. Um, if you're using reverse osmosis, this is another thing I learned as well, is chloramines can get past all your membranes and stuff. So if uh, you have chloramine in your water, it's better if you use a DI resin, because DI resins can take out chloramines. Does this all make sense? So there you have it again, guys. You have your multi-layered system. Remove all your pesticides with hand washing, all your moisturizers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, age your water. This helps get rid of gaseous chlorine. 
but it doesn't get rid of chloramine, so, so you must still use a dechlorinator as well. And this is how you're able to uh, do multiple steps to ensure that the water that you put in your tank is actually safe for your shrimp. Does it make sense? Let's do a water change because proof is in the pudding, right? All right, guys, let's look at our tap water setup. Let's have a little look. Right, so mine's is a little bit elaborate because yeah, I do bazillions of water changes. So mine's is just a wee bit more than what you would normally do, right? So what do you first see here, right? So this is a bucket. This is a 40 liter uh, bucket that is made for making beer, I think. Right, so it's, it's food grade as well. And my water, regardless of the type, sits in here for a day before I use it, right? So th what that does, right, is it lets the water um, adjust to the, the temperature of the room, which is very, very important. And it allows the pH to settle in the container. And so that is why it's always a good idea to use, uh, to let your water age like this. That's what all aging is, right, is you age it. Let it sit for 24 hours. That's what aging is. Right, so then... We have our air going in. I think this helps an awful lot. Can you guys even see it? You can just. It helps an awful lot with aging as well. And then what I also would do guys is I will add a dechlorinator and my one that I use a lot of is Seacom Safe. Okay, so I have friends that breed thousands of shrimp. You will, guys will know Mark Shelley Aquatics, a shrimp really Canadian. Uh, Shrimp Keeping Answers, Shrimp Mania, for example. If we all have to use tap water, this is what we use. We use Seacom Safe or Seacom, the other one, what is it called? I can't remember. Prime. God, I'm so bad with words. Right, so use one of these and you'll be dandy, right? So this is 40 litres of water and it takes hardly anything, right? So th th this thing, people always say to me, you know, there's another product that you could use that's much cheaper and it lasts forever and whatever else, right? But I can't really get that kind of stuff here, so I have to buy what's available in the shops in the marketplace, right? So this is more ready, readily available to all you guys. And guys, safe is very, very concentrated. This is all you need for 40 liters of water. Look how small that is. This scoop is 0 0.2 grams, right? So this is, just say it's a heap scoop, like this, 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 grams into your water, like that, and that is all you have to do. I know guys that actually use tap water straight into the tank and they use this after as well. They put a little bit of this into each tank as they're going along and it seems to work for them. But so you'd let this mix for a few minutes and then you'd go over and start to do your water change, right? So remember guys, you have your multiple layers of protection, wash your hands, age your water, add your dechlorinator, and then you're going to start to do your water changes, right? And this is how you will stop your neocaridina from dying and surviving longer. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you how safe this is to actually do it this way that, that I'm going to show you how to do your water change in a neocaridina tank. We have a tank that is roughly, I don't know, maybe about 100 litres of water, this one here, and we're going to take it roughly about 30%, and we're going to add in 30% back in, just straight away, no dripping, nothing, because... If your water is prepared this way, you don't need to drip it into the tank anymore. Okay, so follow this. All right, guys, let's get our water in. Straight in it goes. So I took out 36 litres and my container is 40 litres. So that's how we do a water change in a neocaridina tank. It is that easy. So you've got to remember your steps. Wash your hands. Age your water. Use a dechlorinator. And then do your water change. Right? And, and if you do it this way, then the size of the water changes doesn't matter so much. It's specifically for neocaridina. I definitely wouldn't do this with a caridina where you have an active soil because then you're messing with the pH of the tank, right? So typically neocaridina uh, water parameters will have a positive, like a plus, plus seven pH. Right? So they're way more stable and that's why you can do water changes like this. Right? So let's go on to one other thing before we call it a day on this video. Let me turn you around a little bit. Guys, I want to talk about food 
a tiny bit here because I see this all the time. You guys overfeed a lot. Right, and shrimp do not eat as anywhere near as much as you think they do. I actually did the math on this a very, very long time in one of my videos and that was, I actually measured the weight of adult neocaridina, took down the numbers and got a mean, basically a number that told me the, the actual medium weight of a certain amount of shrimp. And it was very, very small. Right, so the number that was very, very small, I divided it by, this is basically the body weight, right? So what you do is you go and you look at what, what should these animals food-wise be getting fed daily, right? And for shrimp specifically, it's between 3 and 5%. I think 5% is a wee bit on the high side. Right, so, but for shrimp specifically, it is 3%, right? And the number that you get back is so small that they actually need per day. It takes multiple shrimp for you to actually be able, be able to weigh the amount that you need. And so, for example, if you have 10 adult female shrimp in a tank, right? They're females, biggish females, two centimeters plus, and you want to know how much to feed them every day. I can tell you guys specifically. It is a match head size once or twice a day. Match head size piece of food once or twice a day. And that is it. Right, and I often see you guys putting in big massive pleco wafers and stuff and big massive lollipop sticks and all that kind of stuff. And, and yeah, you're way overfeeding. Yeah, this is, you shrimp don't need as much food as we think they do. And if you give them the food going by body mass and percentages, what will happen is you, you actually find that your shrimp start surviving way, way more because you're not polluting the tank with adding too much food. Does this all make sense? I should have made this video a long time ago because I could tell you guys were needing it as in the steps to make sure that your neocaridina just don't hit, kick the bucket. They don't die over and over and over again, right? So guys, keep it in mind. Let's go through this one last time before we finish up. And that is wash your hands with a little bit of dish soap. Right? When you're preparing your water, age it for a day. This helps to gas off chlorine. Right? And then add a declonator and this will help with other stuff that's in the water. Some, some of these declonators claim to do different things. Some of them are a bit, you know, oh, do they really do that? But it's, I would rather that they maybe do it than not do it, so it's better to use them. And the fourth thing would be control your feeding. Right? So take what I've said today and Apply it to your tanks, specifically the, the water preparation and the feeding. Do that right and you will no longer have dineocaridine. Guys, thank you for watching. If you have found today's video at all helpful, then please leave a like and subscribe. Check out my ebooks. I have some listed in the bottom that help with things like uh, neocaridina, keeping in caridina, keeping in opa uli, because I have tons of opa uli. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Have a nice weekend. I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye.